the moment, my sense is that the businesses have now registered for VAT. Um, they are issuing invoices to their customers. Um, they're receiving invoices and they're seeking credit for the VAT that they've been charged uh, through their VAT return. Um, and so I think a lot of businesses will, will be thinking that, that actually this VAT lark isn't, isn't too complex. The challenge is that the VAT is, even though it's, it's, when it's written down, it's not the hardest tax legislation to, to understand, but it's much litigated. I mean, in current, in, in some quite simple wording, are some uh, uh, ideas, some uh, philosophies, uh, and some practices that are, are very complex. And that's why, uh, if you look at uh, not only uh, the, the UK and the EU, but other countries that have VAT, there's a lot of, of that litigation that goes on. And what I'm expecting to see later in the year is that some tax assessments that will be raised, some questions that will be asked by the FTA, uh, that are going to require uh, businesses to interrogate their legislation in a little bit more detail. Um, and that's going to be because although 5% isn't um, a very high rate of VAT by, by global standards where quite often it, it's in the uh, low 20s. Uh, over the course of a period of months and, and indeed years, 5% um, on a category of sales could give rise to potential um, of, uh, business uh, threatening um, uh, assessments. So at that stage, you're going to be finding that uh, businesses are going to be turning to their, uh, their lawyers uh, to be able to fully understand whether these assessments are, are properly grounded in, in law, but also to look in a little bit more detail at their supply chains, how they're structured and how they're documented uh, in order to minimise uh, the uh, risks of a, um, an assessment or indeed even if you if you win that assessment of an investigation uh, and potentially litigation that uh, can, can run into a period of years.